the modeling you did you have uh like five years ago did you model in a pandemic coming into play in 2020 yeah very much no um very much no and the um the i live in like i kind of like one of my tips is like I, I live in my model like my model is a live document and i know a lot of other people especially as you get to a more kind of established business it's like you you lock the model Right. And then you kind of distribute, you know, certain parts out to your team and you roll it up and, you know, you're like, okay, here's our financial plan for 2021 and let's go, let's go do it. And for me, because our team is, is pretty lean and I have a pretty tight kind of understanding of what's happening minute to minute across the business and what we're seeing. And because in retail, especially there are so many binary decisions that can totally, you know, made by buyers at retailers that can totally swing the business one way or another very, very quickly. Um, I've just made, you know, my approach to date so far has just been to have a live model that I am, I am okay. If like our velocities are faster than we expected, let's go in and update the assumptions and see what that's going to tell us about the next 30, 60, 90, 180 days. Um, and so that obviously informs production planning, all of that, or if we're coming up short, maybe we have an opportunity to take some of the money for that channel and stick it in another channel to be able to reach, reach, uh, kind of reach the revenue targets and one of my kind of growth points is I think a founder is like, and it's very easy to like pound the table to your team, like sales, 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 go out and just do it and come back to me once you've hit your numbers and um, being more iterative with your team. And again, you have to be iterative with your financial model as well. If you're going to be iterative with your team um, has just been a huge unlock for, for the business and my peace of mind, especially in an environment like COVID where, you know, things are changing by a, you know, a drastic amount and very quick, quick order. Yeah, no, I think um, <clears throat> it's a good recommendation. You know, we see a lot of clients that um, or even just folks in the business that have a model or they paid somebody five grand to put a model together. And they're like, I don't know what the hell this means. I don't know how to update it. What's going on? And, and it's like, you know, understanding. And I, I think what I try to tell and, and advise people is like, get something that works for you and then get in it be in there periodically or frequently every Friday or every Wednesday and like start getting into understanding how things change, how assumptions can change different things. And then it'll become second nature to you to be in there and to do that, whether it's updating the model, whether it's updating your books and records, whether it's reviewing inventory reports or velocity reports. But I think that that's the key thing is, you know, at some point you are going to have to do it yourself or something you can do yourself. You can outsource a lot of things, but having those things at your fingertips that allow you to make decisions like and see data in real time and to make those decisions based on that data, it really helps out. And clearly that that's kind of where you come from as well. No, and, you're and totally helps. right. Like I, I, I barely ever, I barely ever go into QuickBooks. I go in there kind of at the end of the month or if I'm putting in invoices or things like that, but it's all, it's all the model. And I totally agree with you. Like, like if a founder, if a founder isn't very financially sophisticated, like totally fine, make a simple model. And, Correct. and like, that's where you start. And the model that we use today from a, like, kind of from a like layout and kind of functional as aspect is very, very similar to the first model that we started out with. It's just, we've been able to get the assumptions to be tighter. Yep. And so it doesn't like, I think eventually, you know, when we hire a CFO, we'll probably start the model from scratch and create something that's, you know, more CFO level, CFO worthy. But right now what we have, I mean, like the fact that I trust it, I know it and I can like tweak it and improve it is like all I need right now. For sure. Thank you.